Hello, my viewers. I'm back in the workshop with this little chair that you see behind me here. And when I say little, I mean little. You can do something to it. It is short, like tiny short, like sit on the floor short. Anyway, my friend gave it to me and I am going to tear this old gimp. That's what they call it. Tear off the gimp, take off this old upholstery. It's all got glue in there and staples and it's upholstered on the back as well. So I'm gonna do something to it. First, we deconstruct. That's easy enough to do. Hard with one hand, but never mind. Is glued on good. Taking a peek underneath. A little bit of padding, a lot of staples. Interesting. It's like a snake skin. Put this camera down and get to it. Oh, it's not very strong. Crippled hands. A lot of arthritis. Well, you get the idea. I pulled off the front. We got some padding, which looks like I could keep. And then in behind is some. Sort of soft fabric. This is the back after I pull this off. Look what I found some clues. Somebody had used what would you call that? Caning? What is it made of? Some sort of caning in and out and in and out, some woven kind of back that included this fancy area. And I noticed along the front there was little round holes as well. Let me get you in there. Do you see the little round holes? Let me. I guess the caning went in there. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be caning. sand this all down and start fresh. I can see daylight through that caning hole. When I look on the other side, I see all the holes. I decided to um, just remove this and put everything new in. It smell better that way. Got it all off and then the staples came with it. That is quite a mess in there. Kind of discouraging, you know? All that beautiful carving from 100 years ago, 150, who knows? It might be an English chair, I'll have to ask my friend. She's got a lot of English stuff, because she's from there and her mom had some old stuff, a lot of antiques. She gave me this and said, fix it up. Do what you want with it. I must remember this technique here that they used, like here, you don't see it, they just stapled it in roughly. Here they had it folded back, stapled along, and then brought it forward so you don't see it. So I must remember to try that. Okay, it just came to me that this little girl doesn't have a name. And I've had Ethel and I've had Lucy, so I believe we're calling her Gladys. Gladys, I'm going to strip Gladys naked for you. Now Gladys, don't, don't judge, but Jad, Gladys does smell a bit. She smells old because she's an old gal. She smells like an old house, but it's kind of a comforting, reminiscent kind of smell, like, like your old grandma's farmhouse or something. And the good thing is she's offering up her staples 
intact. All the staples have come off with the fabric, more or less, so it's not one of those horrid jobs where you do nothing but pluck staples until your fingers are raw. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Gladys. Take your staples with you when you go. The only tools I've used so far is this uh, flathead, or whatever you call it, square head pliers and my trusty little tool. I don't know where I got it. It's very old. I hope it doesn't break. It's just a little flathead screwdriver. A tiny little head that's very good for just prying things off. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll just get this corner and see what's underneath that. My, oh my, we are uncovering layers of archaeology. Old fiber fill. And then this wrapped concoction of, is that horse hair? It's disgusting. And look at this, some good old staining from God knows who or how or what or why. But, <laughs> yeah, ancient. This little envelope of aged uh, decrepitness is going bye byes. Bye bye. And I'll have to remember that they used a second layer of this across the front just to soften this for the old back of the thighs. So, this is where I'll make note of that. Hopefully, I'll remember. Thank goodness it's that old, old finish and a single coat of that and it just kind of gives up and says, sand me, I'm yours. It's kind of easy. I think I will get the electric one out though. Yeah. Yeah. Old wood. My hands are just like pretty tired from using that on these areas. The lighting's terrible, but I have brought it down a shade or two. That will be covered. We don't worry about that color. Gotta do all the legs, front and back of all of this the rear portion. I'm still digging away at all of the little bits of caning that are stuck in there. I got some of them out. Where are we here? I got some of these holes cleaned out, but there's really no need because my fabric, where am I, Chris? Here I am. My fabric's going to come and cover it. I'm just a perfectionist, so crazy. I can stay stuffed. Stay stuffed, my friends. Well, I've eaten enough sawdust, so I think I'll stop. So last night I took the seat off, didn't have any strength to it, you know, it was kind of like a little bit buckling. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this chair, I don't know if it's worth heavy duty attention, but anyhow, I sanded it as best I could and it's now naked. Gladys here is naked. She's just a short little chair for sitting on, on the floor almost, put shoes on. I'm going to see how tall it is. Eight and three quarter inch legs, 11 and a half almost to the bottom of the seat. That's really low. She's a teeny weeny gal. She's a little stunted one. She's a shorty. So hubby is uh, fitting some leftover firm paneling or wood to this thing. Skillful. A little later on, let's have a look. Let's 
seat top on. I put it on with the gun. <laughs> My very own self, that was fun. And underneath, I put in some fabric first. Fabric, and then the base. Being smart, wearing a mask. Because I have been sanding and drilling. I'll show you. Sanding with that as best I can. Drilling with big bits, little bits, and big bits. I've been drilling through big holes, the little weeny ones to get all that. that uh, webbing, caning material. It's like a wood product. Yeah, slaving away. So good morning, it's been a little while. So let me turn you around and show you what I've been doing. I've sanded the snot out of it. I still can't get all of that off. It's more stubborn than um, I imagined. <laughs> and then, after just working really hard on that, I am oiling, waxing, I'm waxing it. And it will get lighter. Right now it's kind of amber, which I don't love, but this color will lighten up. I'm just using, mm, that's French, um, Minwax, case finishing wax. Rubbing it on, rubbing it in. Yep, and I've um, cut the, the foam to fit. I got some from Walmart, pieced it together, cut it to size, glued it with this spray adhesive. Glued it, I was a little short, so I had to take some extra pieces and glue them together and add them to the back. And then just to get the fabric round, because it was kind of tight, I kind of carved it off to uh, give it a lower profile. So that is the seat, and I will put some clean uh, fiber fill on it. So, off we go. I had to wait for a cool day. It's been blazing hot, like 35 degrees for the last three or four days, so today we had a big rain and uh, it's gorgeous again. So what waxing does is it, it, it fills and kind of seals these open dry pores in the raw wood. And then you, you buff it. Really get it to shine, like you really, you're sealing it. You're making it shine again. And that makes it dirt proof. Uh, you can wipe up, you know, stain and dirt, stuff like that. Just makes it a, a polished creature. Yeah. Back to buffing. So now I have found an old coffee, no, an old cocoa bean sack from Ghana. I mean, it says so on the back of this. And I'm trying to piece together just a little snippet, the same size as what came off it. And um, because I like this homespun look, this kind of grain sack look, I'm gonna put that on the back side of here. But it's so wimpy. I might have to stitch it to this to give it some strength. So I'll take that inside where my sewing machine lives. So I have pinned the two together, taking all the old staples and glue off as much as I could. Anyway, I was a little shy of material. I had to really stretch this make it fit. Very, I'm going to call it homespun. Homespun clothes for old Gladys. So that's done. We are one. We've got that strength. And then that woolly looseness. Right, take a good look at this. Five minutes ago, this was as one, nice and smooth and happy. 
Well, I got to thinking, you know, this was an original piece and a little bit older and maybe it had some odors trapped in it. So I went and gave it a squirt of Febreze fabric freshener on that side and I did a little bit on this side and all of a sudden either this guy just grew and expanded which I doubt I think this ancient weird fabric is the kind you can't wash and I think it tightened up and shrank a bit so this is a floppy layer and this is the tight ridiculous layer I even popped it in the dryer for a bit to see if if this would tighten but I kind of think it's this weird old rayon maybe mixture. Lucky me, I guess. I'm just gonna have a kind of a frumpy Gladys because I can't really tighten that. It just, you know, I, I just have no more material or patience to deal with that. Can't really smooth it out. It's too, this is too much. So we'll let it all dry, see if anything changes. Hmm, the pitfalls of just dicking around, thinking you can upholster things. That's what can happen. Hence ensued a battle royale to stretch this fabric. You could bounce a nickel off that. To stretch this fabric from this very edge to that, I fought it. I got a few in at the top. But these weren't anywhere near. I sat there stretching my fabric manually. And then I got a few staples in and a few more. And oh, But that's nice and snug. Look at the back. Frumpy and dumpy. Look at that. And I had it all like fitted and tight. I don't think that's going to change. It's not possible. Yeah, she's just going to look like an old sack. Old sad sack Gladys. Oh well, it's not that important in the big scheme of things in this old world of ours. What the hay. Now I'll cut some fiber fill to fit. I think it's about four layers deep. I'll just notch out for that. That's why this is here. Sort of a template. Then I'll spray adhesive that thing on. So that is done. Sticky, sticky. That is on. And this is my little workshop area. Yeah. I'll let that dry for an hour. And in this case, overnight. Good night for now. All right. So, Goo Gone, Goo Gone gets out the sticky. Goo Gone. Sprayed it on and rubbed it off. What's a bit more oil on a nice little bunch of dry wood like this? So that fixes up the overspray quite well. Cutting some fabric to fit. This is drop cloth fabric. I need to just have enough to double it over and tack it. Double it over and tack it and kind of leave room for that somehow. Yeah, so just roughly cutting it right now. So roughly cut, room to fold over. Roughly cut here, I've got to expose this um, half medallion area. I know it's going to be a struggle trying to tuck this stuff under. I put a few little cuts to um, give it a little give because I've got to kind of tuck it and, and, and tack it. That tucking and tacking is going to be a bitch. Rude language. What the heck? The first tack is in. Once you got that going, you're over some of your fear. You use these tiny little carpet tacks. Different little sizes. And your trusty tack hammer from the tack hammer store. So I'm going along, guys. It's not perfect, 
by any means. Some of them are on a tilt. And then we've got some rumpling and rippling. This is the hardest part to do. Maybe when I tighten that up, some of those little folds will come out. But it's moving along, it's a fun chair. It's not that important in the scheme of things in this old world of ours. Onwards and upwards. Hey kids, we threw that terrible, terrible area and I am just slamming them in now. Let me see here. Oh yeah. I've got a little padded block back there so I don't you know, destroy the, scuff up the wood too much. I'm just terrified that I might break the darn thing with all this pounding. an energy using tactic. Tack, tick. See how I did that? Oh, well, yeah, just another dozen or so along here, a couple dozen, and I'm done the front. Woohoo! Well then, every last one is hammered in. It's looking fantastic. It's looking very cute. Even the back, you know, that lumpy back it's not so bad not so bad in the light of day but one of my little worries came true my little nightmares you see you see over here where are we where's my finger follow the finger there's the finger you see that little split that little split continues and this little nail's popped out so i have to figure out whether to relocate it or glue it in <laughs> a little bit sad i was pounding hard though and it is a very old girl, old Gladys. Well, that's it for today. Hey, I brought the chair upstairs to work on up in civilization. And I have cut out a giant piece of fabric and I'm going to staple under at the front like this guy did. And then I'm gonna start tucking. Wish me luck for the tuck scary as heck. So I got that little row on and it's hard for me with these old hands and this tough old machine. And then I just glued everything. She's dangling out there. I've doubled up under there. Lots and lots of batting so that the edge of your leg doesn't get sore. Just glued it. Glued it under there. What? Don't know what I'm doing. You need a lot of bravery for this kind of work. They do. Then you just flip this up and start, you know, feeding it round. Tucking, as it were. And then I'm going to flip it over and do a lot of stapling elsewhere. Well, not there. That's the pretty front. I don't know what I'm doing. Just pausing to consider. I'm gonna have to pull it through the back real tight and somehow convince it to attach. Tight, 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 that's the uh, secret. Now here's my situation. I've got the thing upside down and I'll be pulling, folding, and stapling. Well, it's hard for me to show you with one little hand. I'm going to fold this all over this area and then I'm going to chunk, 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 chunk also down each side with some kind of arrangement to cut away and somehow deal with this excess fabric on this inner outer corner. I'm just chopping as I go, taking out little chunks of excess material. I mean, I may have screwed it up, who knows, but I'm just trying to leave enough to tuck all the way under there, all the way under there, and then I'm gonna shove all that in and fold it, but I don't wanna take off too much. Hmm, there's that cute back. 
looking all sassy. And over here are the little friends that are going to live with Gladys. We've got Lucy and we have Ethel. I cover them with things, but Ethel and her little footstool are very pretty. Uh-huh. Deconstructed furniture. All right, so over here with the template, they've cut a corner and folded it. And cut a corner and folded it. That is sort of like what I have going on here. I have a corner, which I'm gonna tuck and shove. And over here, bit of a big corner. I'm just nipping away at it. And then just fold everything over and hide it. I had a little help on this. My daughter came with her strong hands and she held things for me tight because tight is the name of the game. And she also did some of this stapling with her strong hands, young and strong. So that's where we're at. I've been trying and I've been like, you know, semi succeeding. In these areas, I'm going to put a couple of tacks in to kind of tighten up, not there, because that's just gush, not there, up here where it's hard. Got that one. And this one is, look, flumpy dumpy, like flies could get in. But I will tighten that up with a couple of tacks. Nothing's getting in there. And then there's just the front two. So progress. So the fronts look to be another whole bunch of thinking and worrying and cutting and way too much fabric and trying to figure things out. So today I don't have enough mental energy for it. I am going to put it away for now. This is what happens to brilliant upholsterers. On this one is what it looks like flipped over with its. It's not a wing back, it's more of a wing front. Little flappers hanging out there. But you get the drift. I'm making the tucks and hammering. Put my hands. And um, yeah, reinforcing here and here, and I'm gonna go around the back. I'm gonna work my way around the dang chair. Still have this guy to fix, but I'm getting finished. Well, let's have a little walk around, shall we? Those are in, gorgeous. Those are in. <laughs> imperfections, that's what it's all about. I can offer you imperfections here as well. Uh-huh, kind of gibbled. Gibbled, but fairly secure. Yeah. At a glance, it looks like a rough and tumble old chair. I popped those two out. I wasn't happy with this gibbly mess. There, that's slightly better, yeah? Tried to shove it under with the hay. It's the best I can do. So therefore, it's perfect. This is the little slip cover, inside out. Preliminary, preliminary fitting going on here. Always a bit of sewing involved. That's the little hem, well the back hem on this slip cover. So far, this is it, you know, little corners, little back hem, so I'm going to figure out how long to make it and then I've got to put my pretty little fringe on there. Can't believe we're at the end of our video, folks. Gladys is finished. She's in here with, uh, what do we call her? Ethel. Lucy over here. And sweet, tiny little baby Gladys. How pretty is she? Yeah, burlap and 
bows. Sounds like the name of a, of a movie. Yay, Gladys. It's a child's cherry. Very short.